What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gaming with the Bros Cast, episode 108. My name is Harrison. I am joined by my brother, Nick. Hello. You know, as always, <laughs> Nick, what's going on, buddy? Nothing much, man. I'm just having a good day. You know, good. worked a little bit late, but felt accomplished. Okay. And, you know, I'm feeling good. Back back in North Carolina, I was in Florida all week last week, which is really, really great. Um but we had we had an eleven hour drive yesterday. Yeah. At Harrison, I have a question for you. Okay. Have you ever been to a? It's a gas station chain started in Texas. Okay. It's called Bucky's. Uh yeah. Mom mom was talking about that over Christmas. Uh yeah. I yeah. I've not been no, but I heard it's like, it's like just it's wild. It's <laughs> it's, phenom- it's phenomenal. We we stopped on the way down, then we stopped on the way back up. And I got the uh, the brisket sandwich okay. because they they chop fresh brisket, and whenever they I guess whenever it comes on the board they say fresh brisket on the board, and then everyone in the store goes fresh brisket on the board, and then everyone gets sandwiches and it's great. All right. So That's awesome. I got a sandwich and it was it was pretty good. And then um, we stopped on the morning. I stopped in the morning on the way back, and I got a a, a little burrito sandwich or burrito bre- right. breakfast whatever it's called um, breakfast burrito. Cool. It was, it was delicious, man. The place is awesome. They got swag. I got some Bucky's boxers. Bucky's boxers. I mean, you gotta represent, <laughs> yeah. man. You gotta represent. Yeah. <laughs> Harrison, how you doing? How, how's your week been, man? Uh, it was good. Um, you know, just uh coming off that little short four day week into uh, off of a mm-hmm. uh, MLK day and, and back to a, a normal work week. So that's uh always kind of sucks when and stuff like that happens it's, it's like <laughs> you get you take sucks. you take both you take both so you get the you get the long weekend and, and then the short, short week followed up but then you got to go back to your normal yeah normal work uh session but that's all good can't can't complain too much uh played some played some games um enjoyed the snow it's been uh it's warmed up here the last couple like day or so but uh yeah mm-hmm. we, we got some some snow uh over the week um got like a couple inches right yeah, it was it was kind of weird, but uh, yeah, maybe maybe some more snow on Friday, so you'll you'll maybe get to experience it. Maybe who knows? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I, I take being in Florida over over snow, but I mean, well, it was it was a little chilly down in Florida. It, it got down to like fifty wa- at night. Mm, whopping, a whopping fifty. I, yeah, I think I got to like, like 19, 19 degrees here, but between like twenty and thirty, like the 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 difference is like. It's, it might as well not even be a difference. It's cold. <laughs> yeah, it's just cold. Um, let's. What was it? Uh, did I did I tell you about? I told you about the neighbors crash or like the people crashing. Did I tell you about the third time it happened? You have not told me about the third crash that happened okay. in your in your yard. <laughs> okay. Yep. So um, there. It was, I think it was Friday. Yeah, Friday night. Uh, someone was coming down and we, it was like a little, like hot, like a little 99 Honda or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we heard this, we heard it's the engine revving up and uh, <laughs> we were like, what the heck is that? And we like, we went outside. It was like midnight at the, at the time. And it was stuck in our kind of our, in between our two neighbors across the street, stuck in that same little ditch. So uh I walked down there and I was like, Hey, you guys good. I was like, I got a truck. Like, do you want me to help you pull it out? And he, he had like some like, like giant, like a uh, towing cord or something just happened to have it. And so he put it on the, this? he put it on, yeah, he put it on my truck and I backed him out. And then my neighbor came out and he, he got stuck. He got like, he went horizontal on the street. So my neighbor got his truck back down and then attached to his truck and then pulled him up the, 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 the you know, up to the top of the hill. So, I was like, man, people just cannot drive. So whatever. Well, your your road really doesn't get much like work done as far as oh yeah, there's there's zero ice. zero plow going on yeah. um at, at all. Uh, wh- you know, which is fine for me. Like I've got a I've got a truck that can go in a four wheel drive, so it's never really a yeah, problem. The truck. But the, the truck. <laughs> uh, the problem is we are like on a like a, a steepest hill in the world, but it's a pretty yeah. long stretch of hill. That I can see you getting messed up if you're if you're not careful. Um, but other than that, yeah, just uh, just a nice nice weekend. Um, nice, you know, made some made some steaks oh, on Friday. It's always good times. Um, I did watch today. Uh, I did watch the Turtles. 
Um, you watched Eternals today? Yeah, I you know I was yeah I, like I, wanted, to, I wanted to watch it. They added it to Disney Plus. Um, it's about a two and a half hour movie. It took me like four hours to actually watch it, just because I kept having to pause to to work and stuff. Um, you watched the damn word. Yeah, but it was it was definitely a Disney Plus movie. I would not have gone to see it in theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was okay for for what it was. I didn't really know much about the lore of the Eternals, um, but it's got some nice twists and turns, and the the ending is sets it up for the uh, you know for the future as they always do. But it was it was mm-hmm. a nice setup for for the future. Um, so that, that was cool. But yeah, it was it was a okay movie. It was, okay. It was definitely. Would, would you recommend it? I mean. If you've For seen all the Disney other Plus. Marvel movies, yes. I mean, it, it of course, but it, it, but it doesn't. And again, with my my biggest problem with the Marvel movies, when when the characters, not granted, this is like a, a cast of characters, but it takes place on Earth, um, Boy. you know, and it kind of flip flops between the past and the and the present day. But during the present day, my biggest thing is where are the other heroes? Like, where are the Avengers? What are they doing? Like. Yeah. There's there's a there's definitely a moment where something major happens that's like earth shattering and you know we're, we're just... again I guess you know by the end of in game like Thor is with the Guardians of the Galaxy you know the, all the yeah, Disney yeah, Plus yeah. shows they're all doing their own thing so it's, I guess it makes sense but it's still like where's everybody at you know is there not like an Avengers button that like if if there is a cataclysmic event yeah exactly all of them just show up. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was a solid movie. If, if you're invested okay. in the Marvel stuff, like I am, like I've seen all the Disney plus shows and all the movies up until this point. So if you've seen them all, I would say it's definitely worth, worth the, uh, uh, I worth mean, a watch. And it's, if you've seen them all, you've already seen yeah, this movie probably. Uh, no, it's, it's pretty different. Like, no, no. I mean like for, for someone who has, oh yeah. Already if you've already, watched. yeah, you've, yeah, you've probably already seen Well, like. Yeah, like that, and like Shang Chi. I didn't. I waited until this, it came to Disney Plus. So, which I mean, I, I thought that was a really good movie. I, I definitely would have saw that in theaters, but um, I just yeah. just waited, whatever. But uh, yeah, it, it's a solid movie for for what it is. It's not, it's not the. It's definitely not even close to like one of the best Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, but it's it's solid for what it's it serviceable. is. It's serviceable. Well, yeah. Before we get into games, speaking of uh, speaking of Marvel movies, I watched. Not it's not a Marvel show, okay. <laughs> but yeah, but it's it's Peacemaker. I don't know if you've heard of this. It's it's based on yes. the Suicide Squad. I do want to see this. Uh, I just watched the first episode, but it was pretty hilarious. It was, is it, it was is a it really, the really cool full episode. season? I think it's episodic. I think there's okay. like only four episodes available currently. Okay, four okay. Or five. But yeah, I, I do want to watch that. Yeah, just something about John Cena and and just the way he looks. It's like it's like he's not a real human because he looks are just, just so large. It's, it's he looks crazy. like a to- he looks like a toddler, like but just in like grown up form. It's really weird. Like his, yeah. I mean, he's he's yeah. super fit, but like any anytime he's ever in shorts, like cargo shorts or anything, <laughs> like he just looks just too big. He, like he looks like an action figure. And yes, he, he does. He really does. Yeah, like. And, and and there's a scene, there's a actually a pretty long scene where he's in, in his underwear and yeah. doing a fight. And I was just like, just looking at him. I'm like, how is that a real person? Like, there's just proportionally, it's just, it just doesn't make sense to me. But now without, yeah. without spoiling anything, or I guess even spoiling the Suicide Squad, does it take place after the Suicide Squad movie? It does. Okay. Okay. Almost. Uh, contextually it takes place immediately after oh, okay okay so i think that's what it was but i wasn't quite sure yet. okay I, yeah i had no idea where where it was going to take place going in but i'm kind of glad that it picked yeah. up after that instead okay. of being like a backstory show okay um, yeah, J- john cena yeah he's there's there's so many good like just fun to watch like wrestler turned you know um wrestler turned actor, actor like like dave batista like is obviously hilarious as drax uh, and i've liked him on some other stuff uh, and then of course the rock i mean the rock is like the, the most famous of all but john yeah. cena i mean from what i've from the clips i've seen 
he's he's got some chops as an actor so i think uh, i think he's the funniest yeah. i think he's just I, just something about him it's it's easy to make a comedy movie with john cena because yeah you can put him in a situation where he's this big guy he's just he's large so it's people. like he's already like hilarious in any scene he's in regardless if it's if, so, uh, supposed to be funny or not because it's just like comically like you said like an action figure that's like perfect yeah. way to describe him like there there was one scene where he was in the hospital and he was wearing like the hospital gown yeah and he was like talking to this guy and then it just did like a shot behind him and it's just like his butt cheeks while he was Cheek. talking <laughs> i don't know why it was, it was really funny yeah yeah that's that's hilarious but um on seeing his body uh <laughs> check out peacemaker it's it's really it's really funny i think it's i think i'm gonna keep watching it yeah i might watch that with Brittany because she she liked uh uh suicide squad suicide squad so nice yeah, that's so, yeah and the, the, yeah the dc stuff they, they got some they got some good stuff rolling now mm-hmm. um i guess speaking of drax and dave batista i did <laughs> nice finish segue. guardians of the galaxy um incredible nice. yeah incredible nice, nice. i i think you're right uh peter quill definitely at the end he definitely grew on me mm-hmm. um just without the whole had that whole story unfolds um yeah just uh, really really great really great game i think i think the combat was probably still the weakest part um yeah, but it sure. but it towards the end like cause i just felt like myself just constantly spamming like the other moves and then but but once you get like the like the elemental stuff um peter quill can definitely start doing some some damage so that's cool mm-hmm. um I, I did have a weird spot like towards the kind of the middle of the game i think like and i don't know because i was messing around with like the performance mode and like the uh, like the the graphics mode or whatever and yeah, okay. i i went to i went to like graphics mode or like the ray tracing mode and kept it on there and i didn't really see too much of a difference so i switched it back to the quality or performance mode and then all of a sudden my game started stuttering like really really badly like even even during cutscenes, and it was like borderline unplayable like i'm talking like five to six frames a second like it was really really bad um and, and but i and i thought to myself i was like okay I've, I've never not had this game in suspend mode like i've always just kept it in quicker zoom so yeah. i was like well let me close it out and then see what happens and i closed it out and then after that it was perfect so i, I don't know if that was just some weird thing where maybe it just got confused between me switching between performance and quality or something like that mm-hmm. um and that caused the issue but yeah evidently whenever I, yeah when i closed it out and, and booted it back up it was it was perfectly fine like it was flawless yeah. or whatever for the most part now that I, now that you say that, I had the same thing happen, and it was it was near the end of the game. It was when when you go back to nowhere, and okay, yeah, like kind of go through that city, and I was like, why is it stuttering so much? Like why? Like why? Like nothing has really changed. But it turns out, and I just remembered it when you said it. But I changed the graphics mode. I switched it to quality, and then I think I switched it back to performance. And I didn't close out the game. Yeah, and it was stuttering for like an hour. And yeah, because like, normally, normally in like most games I've seen where you can swap, it, it tells you, okay, you need to restart the game, and but it didn't with this one, so that's why I never did. Um, oh yeah, but yeah, I, I ended up you know finishing up and stuff like that. It's yeah, it's um, and then like just the whole like they totally did like a, a post credit scene, the way they handled the post credit scene with that was like awesome. How we thought that was over, and then it's like nope, actually it's not over. Yeah, yeah. And then you do like the last boss fight. Uh, I thought that was really, really fun and smart. Um, yeah, and looking forward, I like, really hope they do another one because yeah, that that team was was great. All the mm-hmm. all the characters were great. Drax was hilarious the entire time. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah, it was yeah, it was it was great. I love like the Guardians movies. I love, and then just their interpretation of the Guardians, which you know is pretty similar to the MCU but they have all got their own kind of unique spin on everything. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, I really liked it. Look, looking forward to see what else they can push out with that studio. Yeah. So, okay. I got a few questions for you. Yeah. So without spoiling anything, um, the birthday scene, the second, okay. Yeah. The second yeah. birthday scene. I thought that was pretty emotional. I thought that one was pretty. Yeah, they did. Pretty good. Yeah. 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 Um, 
And then did, did, did you go through and get all the collectibles? Did you like try to hundred percent it or anything like that? Or did you just, I, yeah, I definitely, when I saw there was spots where I could break off the, the main path. Um, I found a lot of the, like a lot of the, um, the suits, like some, some are like super cool. Like the, yeah, like the apocalypse suits, whatever, um, are awesome. Um, I did have the one for, for Groot. It's like the one, I don't know if you found it, but it's the one where he's like, kind of like at the red tent and he's got like the crazy branches coming out and he looks oh, he like kind of creepy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Kellen came cool. in there and he's like, oh, that's Groot. But he's like, that's a scary Groot. <laughs> he maybe he maybe change it back. <laughs> um, yeah. I, but I yeah, took that I, off for a little bit, but then I, I was like, man, this doesn't feel like Groot. So yeah, that, and that's the, that's the problem with, Cause like there, there, there's even a scene where you go to this, uh, this, this planet that's like full of ice and like my Drax had clothes on or had a shirt on, but like in the game, they mentioned like, Oh, why are then, you know, why are you shirtless right now? Like, or how, how can you stand the cold being shirtless? Mm-hmm. So I was like, I, I think I ended up switching them all, all back to pretty much their, their main outfits just to. Yeah. I, I did. I did the same. I didn't really love, um, star lord's outfits i thought they were like just a little bit too uncanny yeah i did he, i did have my, him wearing like the nova Corps outfit for a little bit uh but oh, that, yeah. i ended up switching him back to his his main his main fit yeah because they were like yeah the main fits were i mean they all look really good yeah so yeah hope, hopefully i mean i don't know if they have any plans for a dlc I don't, I don't know how well this game sold or anything like that but i would love to see something else um you know i thought it was a perfect like it didn't overstay its welcome it was a it was a perfect length um yeah i just i thought everything about that game was was great the the combat could was a little bit a little bit dull toward, especially like towards the end yeah um but no fight i mean like the fights lasted like 20 seconds 30 seconds you know it um, didn't go on too long that's no. for sure um and then like all the boss fights were were pretty fun too so yeah, yeah great great game highly recommend if you can i know i bought it for like 25 bucks um so if you could find it on sale or something i would definitely say it's worth it um mm-hmm. if you're if you're turned off like probably like a lot of people were with the avengers it's it's nothing like the avengers it's it's a way better um although i did i did like the story of the avengers but the gameplay wasn't quite as good it didn't make up for the yeah i mean just the, like the, just the constant I mean, and then like the one thing I guess is like they do repeat a, they, themselves a lot, like saying the same lines over and over again when you're in combat. Mm-hmm. Um, which well, that's like it, any. Yeah, it didn't mean it didn't necessarily annoy me, but I did. I could start to, you know, to hear it more and more um, as the as the game progressed. But again, it's you know, it didn't bother me too much. So those, those fights lasted fifteen, twenty, thirty seconds a piece. So it's not like they were constantly repeated but there, there were times where they would say like the same three or four lines within the same you know within the same fight but yeah um but yeah there's there's a lot of dialogue in that game it's it's pretty awesome there's, yeah it's an, an insane amount of dialogue um did you i guess without with being pretty vague did you pay the fine i i did you did okay so did yeah. your sh- at the very end did your ship stop no okay mine did <laughs> Oh, yours did. That's funny. yeah. Because well, I thought, like in that moment, I was like, as Pe- like trying to role play as Peter Quill, I was like, "There's no way he would pay that fine," you know. But yeah, he wouldn't. Um, I know that would be a great ending to like an actual Guardians movie. Is having the the ship stop. Oh, that's how my game ended. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, but yeah, great game. Um, I did mention at the top of or like before I started recording, I did play a little bit more of um, Resident Evil VR. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this game. I'm going to try, but I, I just, and, I, and I've, I've put like the tunnel mode on tunnel vision on for, for it. And it's, and it's gotten a little bit better for me, but I just, I don't know. I I feel so clammy when I play this game specifically in VR and in, in this, uh, the walking dead, I tried that made me feel a little weird. And then whenever I played that, uh, that one roller coaster game well, that make, one, i mean that one will get you yeah, yeah that that made me that feel the same way so I, I just don't know if vr is necessarily for me uh which how, sucks how you, but how are you going to survive in the metaverse if, if you're not <laughs> acclimated vr yeah i guess uh i don't know maybe i'll just turn myself into a robot like mark <laughs> mark zuckerberg 
I saw like a like a video of him the other day, and like every new video he puts out or whatever, like commercial, like he just he like forgets how to be human. It's so it's bizarre. There, there's something wrong. I don't know what it is. I think they replaced him. I think they replaced him with a robot because there's no way. Yeah, it's there's no there's no way he actually interacts with people like that. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like the man who created like the biggest social hub in the world like how do you not have like personal (laughs) or the people skills i don't know it's it's weird sweet baby rays man (laughs) sweet sweet baby rays um but yeah i'm gonna try to push through it but uh i mean it's super cool like just being in that world and looking around it's it's awesome yeah um all right nick i've been talking forever you talk about some some smt i'm sure that's probably the only thing you've been playing since you've been in florida (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I didn't didn't take any take any consoles down to Florida. I just took the Switch, and yeah, I'm kind I'm kind of glad I did because I got back into Shin Megami Tensei Five, and you know, I had stopped probably back in uh, Thanksgiving, early December, right? Yeah. yeah, around Thanksgiving. Well, I I played it a lot over Thanksgiving, and then I kind of fell off, and you know, was pl- playing Halo. It was, it was pretty much for Halo when, <laughs> once the Halo campaign came out. Yeah. Um. And I stopped around like 16 hours in and I think there's four like main like open world hubs. And I was, I was in the second one and yeah, I got back into it in, in Florida and I put another like 15 hours into it. And I'm in, I'm in, in the third world now, our third area. And Dan, like this, this game might be the best turn-based RPG I've ever played. Wow. Like it, I, I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's, the exploration, which is so rewarding because you're like constantly gaining experience just by exploring, or if it's through the combat, like you're constantly having to rearrange your team and, you know, look at the weaknesses of a boss and kind of change your team comp to, you know, avoid their criticals, avoid their, um, you know, avoid affinities that they have. Because each of your demons, each of your characters are, are weak to a certain affinity, like fire, ice. They have strengths and certain affinities. So you just constantly have to rearrange your team and kind of finding that right build. And I think that's just really cool. Like I've been, you know, spending like 30 minutes just tinkering around with my, uh, like with my team comp and like fusing mm-hmm. demons together to create new demons. And, you know, just, it, it kind of sounds like, it sounds kind of, lame when you talk about it, it kind of sounds like you know oh, it's an rpg whatever whatever you know you can play wow you loser but i mean this this game is it's really really cool it's like in terms of an rpg which is normally pretty story heavy yeah like when i when i think of you know a game like uh pokemon that might stop you every 10 minutes to to do a cutscene or something like that. I mean, this game, y- you're playing the game like ninety percent of the time. The other ten percent is is just you know, shorter cutscenes, boss introductions, things like that. So like, it's 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 like an RPG. Like you're 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 playing the game, man. It's cool. Yeah, it's it's really really good. I I freaking love it. And I know I'm not going to finish it before Pokemon comes out later this week, and we'll talk about it soon. But um. I'm excited for Pokemon and I'd like, I'm yeah, gonna, here we are, Nick, here we are. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's, let's talk, let's just talk about it. Because... Well, let's, let's, before we do that, um, I, I finished up the Halo Infinite's like their, their cyber event showdown, whatever. Okay. Um, that was cool. I mean, you know, like little nice. 10 unlocks. I got my, my, uh, my Mohawk, uh, light show thing, which is, which is cool. Um, so I've been playing some more of that. And then I did start, uh, it just came to Game Pass, Nobody Saves the World. Um, okay, and I it's, it, I played for about 45 minutes and I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to play some more. Um, it's, it's very kind of Zelda-esque. Um, it's like a, like an over the top kind of like dungeon crawler type game. Um, mm-hmm. and I just got out of like the first like dungeon area and I'm in like the, I guess the, the open world or the, the main, main area. Um, but it's pretty, it's pretty unique. It's, it's kind of like a, a light RPG almost. Um, okay. You're, you start out this, this dude named nobody, I guess he's like this pale white naked man walking around. 
Uh, and uh, he's, I think he's got amnesia, so he doesn't really know what's going on. Um, and then you, you find this, this wizard's wand and you can all of a sudden transform into a rat. Um, and then you get yeah. like these, uh, you get like different move sets. I think the rat, like um, you can, you know, if you, you get like your basic attack and then you have like your, your other move. I can't forgive me. I've just barely played it. So I don't know all the, all the names, but uh, you have one move where you can kind of like devour enemies and like regain your health. Um, and then w- once I got out of the, um, and it's constantly like put, put in like, uh, kind of like quest to you. It's like, okay, kill 50 enemies with a rat or, or blah, blah, blah. So it's like, you're constantly nice, unlocking, nice. um, these classes. And then at the end of the, uh, the dungeon, I unlocked, I think it was like a ranger and a, like a knight or some sort of like sword based person. Mm-hmm. Um, so like a bow and arrow person and like a sword based person. Uh, and you can kind of change, change your um transformations on the fly like it's a it's like a radial meal that you choose radial wheel that you choose uh so it's it's interesting oh, cool. so far cool. um nice. I, I think i'm gonna try just a little bit more to see how i like it um but yeah i mean it's on game pass so it's uh i can't remember who and and is this a roguelike this isn't a roguelike is it no no yeah it's not a, it's not a roguelike but okay um like the, the first area it's like a it's like a dungeon you go through and there's like a, like a i think there's like a boss at the very end uh, but you can go through the uh that dungeon again to um when you leave and go back in it'll refresh the enemies so if you want to um, finish out like some quests you got you mm-hmm. can do that um so again i've only i've only put about 30 45 minutes into it but it seems pretty cool so far uh yeah, it, looked, it looked pretty cool from the screenshots i saw i didn't really see any gameplay but this, Drink, is, this is one of those games that I was definitely interested in. Drinkbox Studios. Who makes... Did, what, else did, what else did they make? They didn't make Guacamelee, did they? They did, yes. Yep, so this is their first game since Guacamelee 2. Wow. Oh, but it, I mean, it's a pretty game. It's got like a, a nice art style, um, you know, RPG light kind of thing with the... With, uh... Oh, they did Severed as well. Okay, I... Severed. Oh yeah, severed. Yeah. Um, you know, and then like a like a dungeon crawler as well. So kind of kind of Zelda esque. Uh, I don't know if it's on this. No, I think it's just Steam and Xbox. I feel like this would be the perfect game for like Switch on handheld. But yeah, um, it's yeah, it's exactly. got like a it's got like a cool cool art style to it. It's it's. Uh, I'm like I'm gonna give it a shot. Nice. And and this is called Nobody Saves the World. Yep. Nobody saves the world. And it's on Game Pass and. PC. I think it's on yeah on. PC and Steam. Yep. Nice. Yeah, that sounds cool. cool. I'll definitely, I definitely need to check it out. I have like a laundry list of Game Pass games yeah. that I wanna that I wanna play. I really wanna play Splunky, too. Yep. They added Hitman the trilogy. Yeah. I wanna oh play God, that? Yeah. Forgot about that. They added got that downloaded. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff when uh, we're on the uh, the precipice of Pokemon. Um, which speaking uh, of Nick, let's uh, let's kind of dive into it, Nick. Um, yeah. So we clipped we clipped ourselves two weeks ago saying yeah. we were pretty much shitting on Pokemon saying it's gonna be it's gonna be bad. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it, it looked like there was nothing going on in the world. They hadn't really shown much, um, and that's probably because because there was nothing to do in the game. And we you know, clipped it and put it on TikTok, so it's it's there for the world to see. And and now here we are. And I've been tweeting about it a little bit over the past week, just you know, as I came across the leaks, and you know, a lot of people have either ripped the game or they're you know, they got it early and they're playing it. Yeah. But, you know, we're not going to go into spoilers or anything about the game, but Harrison, like what, what changed your mind? Like what, what changed your mind between two weeks ago and now? You know, I, I think just the fact that the, the last couple of trailers they put out have gone in more depth, um, more in depth about the game, which is what I've been kind of, wanting all along i mean i I did a youtube video a couple of days ago just talking about how bad the marketing has been and i mentioned like maybe maybe it doesn't even matter because it's it's pokemon it's gonna sell like crazy i mean we've we've been talking about this since it got announced um yeah. i i just my my biggest complaint or my biggest like thought about it is for players like us where we we grew up with pokemon um, and we're, we're not necessarily like diehard fans of Pokemon. You know, we're not playing every single type of Pokemon game. Uh, but for the most part, we, we, we enjoy it. 
Um, so I, I really think the last three or four Pokemon games have just been really stale. And oh, yeah. I was, we you know, when they announced this last year, you know, I think you and I were both like pretty pumped. And then we just didn't, we didn't hear much. Um, what they showed, they showed look the stuff. Yeah. The same kind of different clips of what they've already shown. Um, the, the open, we didn't know if it was open world or like kind of, you know, uh, hub, air, hub, base. hub base, which it's, it's hub base, which is fine. Um, you know, we didn't know much about it. And then like here now, like two or three weeks prior to the game release, they're finally coming out and showing all this stuff. And then obviously, you know, it, you know, majority of the game got leaked, which, you know, it's like, did they, did they, oh, leak it, it? it all got leaked. Yeah. Did they leak it? Like, did, did they net like, Obviously, they didn't leak it, but it was just. But it shouldn't just, have to. I shouldn't be excited about this game without it having to be leaked. And I, I didn't look at every single spoiler. I looked at a, I looked at a, a few things, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it just looks it looks a lot better than what we have seen so far. And it sucks that it's two or three weeks prior. But I mean, here we are. I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> like a lot of the spoiler, like a lot, a lot of the leaks were just gameplay mechanics. Yeah. That, I'm excited, like I'm super excited about these gameplay mechanics, and they weren't shown off during the trailers. Yeah, and not until like and not until today, at least with that you know six minute overview trailer that came out. But yeah, and and it's kind of like night and day compared to um, uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl because people were really excited about that, and then it leaked. People got it early, and those leakers and those you know those those players that got it early, they were like. Yeah, this game kind of sucks. This game really doesn't have much going on. And it's the opposite for Arceus, where we didn't think there was much going on. And then at least, and they're like, this game's kind of great. You know, yeah. graphics still aren't, you know, obviously not as great as we want them to be, but everything else, the gameplay, the catching mechanics, like, it's amazing. Yeah, it, it looks. Yeah, it looks like we this is the Pokemon game we've wanted for a long time. And, you know, yeah. I'm I'm still cautiously optimistic. I'm still definitely going to just wait for reviews and just read a few different websites and just see what they have to say. Um, because if, if there's any, like, indication of, you know, slight letdown or something like that, um, I, I, just, I just want innovation, I think, with Pokemon. They, they've, Game Freak has yeah. just done the same thing over and over again, and they haven't really needed a reason to shake things up too much just because the game sells so well um but i did see i think it was a comment i saw on one of the overview trailers it was it said pokemon sword and shield and brilliant diamond and shining pearl walked so pokemon rcs <laughs> could run so i mean it's true hopefully that's true i want this game to be really good i want to fall in love with pokemon again because that was like our childhood game growing up yeah. and it was so much fun and just all the just from watching the tv show to playing the game like you just this is the the vision you had back then for what you would want now and hopefully we can get it or close to what that experience is yeah i i think i think we will now that i've seen leaks and you know impressions and what i'm most excited about for this game is you know in in the traditional pokemon games catching pokemon isn't that fun no it's it's a simple button prompt you have to get their HP down to a certain level. It's kind of monotonous. And compared to like, you know, the TV shows when we were growing up, like that's like the most exciting part is when Ash is, is catching a Pokemon. Yeah. It's going to be like that, you know? I mean, I, I get like, apparently it's going to be like that where you're actually walking around, you're ducking in grass, you're throwing smoke bombs, you're sneaking up on Pokemon, you're getting charged at and having to dodge out of the way. And then yeah. they nix the what i think is is probably the worst part of a lot of pokemon games and that's just the regular trainer battles and that might yeah. be a hot take because you know people love to see trainer battles in pokemon but you know no one wants to fight jill or or rob for the 500th time who just have a you know level five metapod that's just using harden bug catcher stan yeah, yeah. Bug catch, yeah i mean like do you really want to fight trainers? Is that really what you, what you want to do? Or do you want to catch Pokemon and fight these like really, really strong 
noble Pokemon. Like that sounds a lot more fun than just going through the eight gym. Yeah, that that's the most exciting to me. I think is the noble stuff. That that stuff looks really looks fun. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, play, I forgot to mention it. I, I played about 45 minutes of Pokemon last night. Just I, I got into bed and threw on a podcast and was just laying there um, chilling. And yeah, it's just, it's so boring. Like, it's so easy. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, You've seen it. You've seen it 10 yeah. games for 10 games. Yeah, it, it, it definitely needed needed a shake up. And, and again, hopefully, hopefully this can provide because, yeah, just from what I've seen so far, the leaks and stuff like that, just looks 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 great yeah like we, I, man i yeah I've, I've been on the on pokemon reddit just you know just looking around looking at all the leaks and stuff and people are people are pretty pumped yeah and i think that's i think that's a really good sign is when the, the leakers are excited yeah normally they're like oh another dud or you know not as great there's no post game or whatever it's like this is it's kind of got it all it seems yeah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, again when the the reviews drop on like Wednesday or Thursday, I'll I'll be reading a few and watching some videos and stuff. And hopefully, hopefully everything is generally positive. Hopefully they hopefully these websites let people that are that love Pokemon or you know know Pokemon or whatever the case is, or maybe even like people like us. Uh, hopefully those people get to review it, um, just so they can I, give us that. Uh, I hope it's un- the opposite. We talk like maybe like an unbiased opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, looking back at all the glowing reviews of Sword and Shield, I mean, I think IGN gave it a nine or an eight yeah. or nine. Like that game does not deserve an eight or nine. No, I would say that's like a six. It just, I thought it was boring. Again, it was so easy. Yeah. But boring. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah. It, it's, it's, re- I'm, I'm really, I'm just really excited for what this could be more yeah. so than any other game this year, because I know Elden Ring is going to be good. I know Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be good. It's gone gold, baby. It's gone gold. It's gone, it's gone gold. No God of, God of War 2 is going to be good, but this is like, this could be amazing. This could be the best Pokemon game ever. Yeah, it could be. Which is, it's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. Uh, any last thoughts on Pokemon before we jump into the, uh, the news? Well, I'm sure we'll have a lot more to say next week. Yeah, because I'm sure. I know you're going to cave. Yeah, regardless. I mean, if the reviews I'm are good, man, I'm 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 excited. I'm, I'm excited for just an adventure. You know, is there a certain number that you're uh, you're hoping for? I mean, I, I don't expect this thing to be like tens and stuff and nines, but you know, if it if it's getting like eights and the the reviewer is positive and there he's you know he or she is stating that it's innovative from other other pokemon games then that's all i need i don't i don't necessarily need this game to be like flawless because i know it's not gonna be but um just as long as i could see the word innovative and in somewhere in that review or yeah. you know trying new things or the stuff that they're tried works you know i think, yeah. I think just because good it's very good yeah thank you no you know you added it my because <laughs> we we know they're at least trying something new with with Arceus, but what you said really really sticks. I want to I want to know if it works. Yeah, I want to know if what they're trying works for a thirty hour game. Yeah, I want to know if Game Freak has the chops to not only completely do something different, but also make it good. Yeah. Because we know we we know they can make a Pokemon game. They've done it the same one for fifteen what years, twenty years. Oh so we know they can make it. Um, but I'm I'm glad that they are at least doing it, something different, um, and shake up. You know, and maybe we'll, you know, I, you know, I don't know if they plan on doing the Legend series differently from like the regular. But if this game is so good, I don't see how they can go back to the normal stuff. But we'll see. I mean, who knows? God, no, they can't. They can't. They cannot go back. I don't know. Like, even just being able to run around during yeah. the battle, they can't go back from that. Yeah, but we'll we'll see. I, again, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic for it. It, it looks it looks cool on paper, um, and, and from the videos we've seen, it looks it looks good. So, looks we shall see. We don't have to wait too much longer. Looks like what we've wanted for years. Yes. 
Um, but uh, but news, we somehow we forgot to mention this, but um, the PSVR two got announced uh, like a few weeks ago now. Um, but and then of course like the uh, that Horizon game got announced as well to come alongside it. Um, yeah, got that's being like co developed by Gorilla and somebody else. I can't remember exactly who it is. Um, but my question to you, Nick, and this is the reason why I even really brought it up. As someone who owns the PSVR and someone who owns the Quest 2, are you remotely excited for this thing? I mean, place, Sony has a kind of a bad habit of not supporting their like peripheral and accessory kind of stuff. Like, I mean, obviously the PSP, the, the Vita, uh, which was which was a solid system from what I hear, they just didn't support it very long with their with their main party, with their first party stuff. Uh, and the, the PSVR. I don't remember anything per first party for this thing. There wasn't, there wasn't much, if, if anything. And th- there's a reason I haven't, I didn't play my PSVR after the first six months is because nothing came out. Yeah. And, you know, you asked, you asked if I was excited for it. I don't, I don't think I am. And I, me and me and Alicia were actually talking about this on the 10 hour drive to, to, <laughs> to Florida. You know, yeah. Gaming came up. <laughs> as I was listening to one of the podcasts and so I'll, I'll credit her for, for this analysis, but the problem with PSVR and, and PSVR two as well, since that's also connected to your PlayStation is that one, you need a PlayStation to play it. Right. And two, you're going to be the only one playing that PSVR when you're in a room full of, you know, two or three, four people. Yeah. Just like, just like the initial PSVR, just like all the other VR headsets, except for the wireless ones, like Oculus Quest, Oculus Quest 2, where you can have two to three people in a room all playing VR at once. And, you know, I, mean, I know a lot of people prefer playing VR by themselves or they prefer playing remotely with other people, but yeah, it just doesn't have that same connectability, that same social aspect that you know, something like Oculus Quest has or something like just a regular Nintendo Switch or an Xbox has. So I don't think PSVR sold that well. I don't think it sold well enough to warrant having first-party games on it. And I think it's going to be the case for PSVR too, especially if that's more expensive. And it's already hard to get a PS5. Yeah. So if if you have a hard-to-get console and you release, you know, a $300, $400 accessory to that, there's no way that's gonna sell. This this only works on PS5. I don't know for sure, but I'm I'm just speculating and assuming that this will. Do we do we know when this is coming out? Do we know if it's coming out this year? I, I think it's 2023, maybe. Maybe. Then then yeah, that'll be that'll be PS5 exclusive. Especially if it's just running on one cord and doesn't yeah. have that separate processor that was needed for the PS4. I think it'll be exclusive to the PS5. And maybe yeah. they'll have, I mean, they'll have an, they'll have a higher install base by then, but I don't know. It's, it's hard to get excited for VR because, you know, you get to a point where it's hyper-realistic and then you're, and then you're like, all right, I'm, I'm living in this world now. You know, it's, it's like, okay, I could just take this off and see the same thing. Yeah. Not, I don't know. I think, I think a lot of uh, non-gamers and a lot of non-gaming companies are hyping up the metaverse and VR like it's the next coming of Christ. And yeah, <laughs> I don't I even get it. There's like nothing. Like, there's no. There's no metaverse yet. Like they're just talking <sighs> about it. It's it's so strange. It's so bizarre. I was watching the news this week, and they were talking about the the Microsoft um, Activision acquisition. Yeah, and. They were they were claiming that it was because Microsoft wanted to expand its metaverse. No. And I was like, what what the hell does that even mean? Like, no, no. Xbox bought them so they could own those it's games. It's like they're it's like they're trying so hard to make this thing a thing. And yeah. it it's nothing. Like it's just a phrase that Facebook has created and is trying, I guess, trying to create this thing, but it's not. A thing. It's, it's nothing. The meta, the metaverse. It's it's 
it's a it's a theory. It doesn't actually exist. It, there's not some interconnected space where people go in boardroom meetings and share a creative ideas. That doesn't exist because it's not practical. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Stupid. Like, I don't know. Maybe no, I'm X, Xbox, uh, Microsoft acquired Activision because a they're like a three trillion dollar company and they have essentially unlimited funds. They have the market cap to do that. They, they have the market cap to do it. They, you know, they are. Microsoft and Xbox have jumped the console war. They are they are no longer a part of it. They are in the content war. They don't care where you play their stuff. Damn. <laughs> they, they, you know, and that's that, that's fine. Like Nintendo and you know, Sony, they're they're bigger gaming wise. They're they're bigger companies. They make far more money than than Xbox does. As I mean, as far as we know. Yeah, as far yeah, as far well, I think I think that's I think that's accurate. Um, as far as like, yes, yeah, I think just as far as revenue like right now goes, okay. um, they're they're still behind. So a, I think that's why there's not going to be any issue with with the merger and, and a potential like monopoly because they don't have a monopoly in gaming because there's so many other smaller companies and obviously Sony and um, Nintendo. But yeah, I, I think Microsoft is is has jumped jump the content or jump the micro the uh, console wars and they're just focusing on how much content can we provide for this service going forward you know can we can we get to the point where you know can we get a game pass app on nintendo can we get a game pass app on playstation i think that's their end goal they don't care where you play it or how you play it they just care that you're playing they just care that you're playing and that you're in the ecosystem. So and and they're fighting against the the Google Stadias and yep. whatever Apple's gaming console is inevitably gonna be in and their Netflix's, in their streaming service. Netflix is it. going into gaming too. So it's yeah, huge. And I, and I think Amazon, like it's it every yeah. everybody is getting into it because everybody figured out that it's lucrative. It's yeah. more lucrative than the film industry. It's more lucrative than the music industry. It's it's the most lucrative entertainment entity, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh, it's insane. It, it's insane. I mean, just to I think put it in perspective, like I think what was it? I think Disney bought Marvel for like three billion or something, or or Star Wars was like three hundred million or something. And like just, and at the time we thought that was crazy. We thought that yeah, that thought we thought that was insane. And then obviously that was a a good investment on on Disney's part because I mean they're making billions off of those franchises. But yeah, yeah. I mean I, I don't think people think as gaming as how much revenue that it, that it draws. It, it draws more than anything else. Um, I think right uh, more than the movie industry. More yeah yeah more than music. I mean it's it's the biggest kind of entertainment out there um and and microsoft was just so smart to focus on game streaming and and game pass when they did because they they beat everybody to the punch and they're yeah. you know they're they're i guess on their way to winning you know they're they're making you know 25 million subs a month or, or whatever 20 25 million game pass subscribers yeah. It's gonna it's gonna obviously increase when Starfield comes out and Elder Scrolls and you know all these other first party exclusives that'll be hitting. So yeah, it's insane. Uh, I just want to put it this way: you can only sell an album once. You can only sell a movie ticket one, two, three times. You can only sell yeah. a DVD so many times. You can sell a Fortnite skin or Halo skin. You can sell fifty thousand different skins. Yeah, in one game. 50,000 of the same skin. I mean, it's to ridiculous. 50 million different people. Yeah. And it's, it's just exponential. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm wondering what the game industry will look like in, in five years. Just will, you know, I, I feel like, I mean, with games being 70 bucks now um, for Sony products or for PlayStation. And then, you know, some, some companies are, Running seventy dollars, uh, EA. Um, are, are those are those games dying? Are those game prices dying? Because it's it's hard to 
you know, justify paying that much when you can go to Game Pass and you get it for free, essentially, right? Yeah. Now, now obviously, I think first party Nintendo stuff, Sony stuff, it's worth it's worth seventy bucks probably, right? It's those games are always going to be amazing, it's be but worth it. you know, with all these third parties, whether they they start day one on Game Pass or, or if Microsoft just buys them, you know, you're you're taking revenue away from. I guess we won't mention Nintendo because, you know, Sony Sony is more of a player than than they am as, as far as the third party stuff and multiplayer games. So, uh, if you take away Call of Duty off of PlayStation going forward, and, you know, Warzone will stay. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe maybe it pressures PlayStation into allowing some sort of like you know Game Pass to be on their system, and they you know they get a, probably a small percentage of revenue from that but maybe maybe it pressures them maybe maybe they'll maybe they'll rethink their strategy going forward i'm not i'm not sure it's it's interesting to think about or they're forced to innovate on you know first person shooters and they bring back an old franchise or start a new shooter franchise i mean aside from aside from call of duty they don't have any they don't have any shooters on their platform no. they don't have any first party games kill zone doesn't exist anymore um I don't even know what else they had before that, but it's really it, I think. Yeah. I mean, they have to fill that void somehow because Call of Duty is always the number one seller yep. on the on the PlayStation store every year. I mean, even Vanguard, which was a lower which was a lower seller compared to other Call of Duties, that was the number one sold game yeah. on the PlayStation store in 2021. So, you know, Warzone, you know, even if they can keep Warzone, and, and they probably will. They got to find something to fill that void of of whatever next Call of Duty is going to come out only on Xbox. Yeah. Because otherwise they're going to be missing out on millions of dollars. Yep. You're right. Uh, there is that rumored like Game Pass service they got coming for for PlayStation, but I just, I just don't think they're, I think their games are too expensive to make. And the fact that none of them have microtransactions, which is great. Which is good. Yeah. Um, but thing. there's just not that extra revenue that they have for their games. Once they sell their games, that's it. Um, which is, I mean, obviously why they've been putting stuff on the PC, which is smart. Um, I don't know how we got from PSVR to, <laughs> to Microsoft again, to but the, the gaming industry as a whole. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it was it's the biggest news of the century. So it's we're bound to it's talk gonna, about it for a few weeks. It's going to find its way in every conversation. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, Another another quick note here, uh, Halo. Uh, they they mentioned that in season two that you'll be able to earn credits to purchase like skins and stuff. So that's in the battle pass. Yeah, in the battle pass. I mean, you have to, you have to buy the premium battle pass to to earn these these credits. But uh, that's good, right? That's kind of what we were yeah. kind of one of the things that was missing at the battle pass is every other game has a way to kind of earn you know small amounts of credits to buy a skin or something. So that's nice that they're gonna have that. Uh, yeah, it's coming come season two, so we'll have to wait until what May for that to to be implemented. Mm-hmm. But at least we know it's on the horizon. Yeah, it, it, I mean they're learning a lot. I think a lot of this, a lot of this stuff should have been available out of the gate. They should have known this just by looking at other, yeah, games with um, with battle passes and, and seasons and stuff. I mean, Fortnite's been doing this for years, where you can earn credits. Yeah, to buy yeah you gotta see what you got. You gotta see what you can get away with. <laughs> And they can't. They can't get away with <laughs> swindling people twenty dollars for uh, for cat ears. Unfortunately, yeah. well, they can. They can. They did. They got. They can't. Yeah. Uh, but they, I mean, they've already lowered their prices of stuff. Like cut everything pretty much in half. So mm-hmm. uh, they're they're listening and they're they're doing it pretty quickly. So that's you know what what else can you ask, right? Yeah. Um, Nick, you want to read the uh, the next one? Yeah. So um, FromSoft released a little bit of information about Elden Ring, which by the way has gone gold. So it's no more delays. It is coming out next month, finally. After years and years of waiting, Elden Ring is 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 upon us, thank the Lord. Um, but this game is roughly 30 hours. If you're playing, if you're kind of, you know, gunning straight through the main ca- the main campaign, kind of beelining to towards the end. Um, which is kind of kind of on par with like Dark Souls 3. I think Bloodborne was like similar length, maybe a little bit longer. And of course, there's going to be a new game plus and a yeah. bunch of side stuff for you to do. Very excited so, about new game plus. 
first time, as always. First time they've they've had one in in any Souls game. Well, no, no, they have. They always have a new game plus. Mm, this is the first time. They've never had a new game plus. Yeah, you can finish it, and then you go you go plus one, and then all the enemies scale as well. But you start out with all of your stuff. You sure? Yeah. I don't. I don't think that's the case. I don't know. I played. I played through Bloodborne four times, and I didn't play through it on a, on a different profile. I don't know. You can go up to like. You can go up to plus nine. Really? And okay. If the enemy scale, and you can go up to like level. But did you keep thousand. all your stuff though? Did you keep yeah. your? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Maybe I'm misremembering. Then. I don't know. Maybe. I, I'm definitely right with Bloodborne. Hold on. Did I don't know about Dark Souls. Bloodborne. Has... I know Dark Souls has it too. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're fact fact checking on the spot. Yeah, you're right. They did. Yeah. Yeah. You, you bring everything over. All the enemies scale. And you you keep all your stuff. Yeah, I don't remember them having New Game Plus at all, but yeah. Reading it right here. Cool. Either way. Um yeah, kind of what kind yeah. of what to expect from a Souls born game. So and I think it's kind of cool that this is still the same length as like a Bloodborne or Dark Souls and that it's not like exponentially longer. Yeah. Because that means just if that means it's not like overly padded with, you know, the the obvious open world tropes that you can have right with like the kind of bs side quests and all that stuff i think i think this game it's just gonna it's gonna go straight for it and it's not gonna waste your time and another another kind of news story came out with elden ring just talking about the difficulty of the game and i think this is like an ign piece that they did but yeah um you know, to, to kind of make up for the difficulty of bosses, which is still going to stay the same in Elden Ring, it's you know the bosses aren't going to get easier, but getting from A to B is is going to be a lot easier. From okay. being able to use your horse to checkpoints or I mean, or save save spots that are kind of closer to bosses, unlike you know games like Dark Souls Two where you have to trek across a half the map yeah, to go from then... from bonfire to a boss. <laughs> yes. And then, you roll off a cliff and die and have to do it again. Yep. So uh, that's, that's nice to hear. Yeah, uh, Dark Souls did not have New Game Plus. Uh, Bloodborne and Sekiro did. Okay. Dark Souls the, did uh, have New Game Plus? Mm-hmm. I, think that, I guess that's what I was remembering. Hmm. Um. Yeah, super. Gosh, I can't wait for Elden Ring, Elder- man. I, it feels like it's so far away, but... It's a month. A month. I much. just I lose my life, man. There's there's so many games coming out in a month, just with like over the next month, it's kind of crazy. Are you are you going to pick up Horizon or are you going to wait for that? I'm going to wait. You're going to wait between Pokemon and it seems like a good summer game, like when there's nothing yeah. out out there, you know, right, like right around like late July, early August, something like that, maybe until Splatoon three comes out in the summer <laughs> and like Mario yeah, Rabbids. That. Um, and then lastly, last uh, news article, um, the Switch's latest update has improved uh, the N64 emulation. Um, I remember specifically like Ocarina of Time was kind of rough for some parts. Um, Nick, have you played any yeah. more of the N64 stuff? I I played a little bit of Banjo-Kazooie. Okay. I it up and, and played through the tutorial. They just added that, right? They did, yeah. Okay. They added that last... Uh, last week, last Thursday, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I played the, the tutorial and got to like the first level of the game, and then I cut it off. Have you have you ever played Banjo before? Uh, very very lightly. Very lightly. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, it feels it kind of feels like Mario in, in the sense of like a old school 3D platformer, but I just I, I don't know. I'm not in the mood for something so janky. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. If that, if then 64 it's, it's hard to go back to yeah um it is it is it's ugh. yeah I, I have not i have not i think my nintendo switch online is getting ready to expire i think or i may, may have already done so i'm not quite sure mm-hmm. um 
because I didn't want it to automatically renew just in case I wanted to do this expansion, but I don't know. I don't know if you, if you want to play like Majora's Mask or Paper Mario. Yeah, but I just... but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play Majora's Mask again on the no. 64. I would play it again on the 3ds. Yeah, it was excellent on the 3ds. I thought it was great. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just the extra. I mean, I'm not gonna do the family thing because I know Kaylee can play Fortnite for free, so I don't have to worry about that. So dropping 80 bucks on it on the service isn't an issue anymore. But I mean, 50 and uh or whatever it is 40 50 i think um 50. 50 uh yeah i don't know like i'm not gonna play animal crossing anymore i don't know i uh, yeah i can, I can always wait at any point and, and do it if they if they add something crazy mm-hmm. like game boy like game boy games or game Boy Advance games but I, I just don't think nintendo 64 games hold up they don't they don't they're definitely they don't. at all yeah i mean i mean even look going back at like the nes i mean they still look good but the 64 just at the time it looked fantastic but now it's like just ugly and blurry and yeah, yeah. the first the first run at 3d it, it didn't did not age well no it did not it i mean the same for like some gamecube games and, and ps2 ps1 games like those didn't really age well either yeah that's the problem with 3d 3d games is that they just they don't age very well yeah unless, unless you have like a good art style like wind waker or something then that'll, that'll yeah. forever hold up but yeah when in the 64 yeah it's, it's, it's a little rough it's, t- it's tough to go back to you mm-hmm. um but yeah that is going to wrap up the news and also the show because we are done <laughs> <laughs> but yeah next next week we'll we'll likely both have played some a few hours of pokemon rcs so um you know or, or at least one of us and nick you'll, you're, you're probably definitely likely to pick it up on friday yeah i've i've gone on the reddit page too many times to not pick it up. <laughs> to not pick it up yeah uh so yeah we'll look forward to that look look forward to our uh our thoughts hopefully hopefully it's a fantastic game and it's the best pokemon to date uh you know we can only we can only hope so hopefully hopefully the difficulty kicks our arses yes i I want it to be tough i want it to like i want to like it's okay for me to die a game like i'm okay with it so uh, i heard as i heard as decently difficult difficult any any difficulty higher than what brilliant diamond is 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 just way better yeah because God, it's so, oh my God. I was about to fall asleep last night just playing. It was so boring. I, I did play about 10 minutes last week and I was like, I'm not going to torture myself. I don't want to play this anymore. Yeah. I played one trainer battle and I was like, I can play this game with my eyes closed. Yeah. yeah you just, I just yeah. with falling asleep right now. But yeah, that's going to wrap up the show, guys. We will see you guys um, next Monday at 8 30 uh, Eastern Standard Time over on Twitch. Nick, where can they follow us? Uh, will they, uh, twitch.tv slash game with the broadcast nick where, th- where can they follow us over on twitter on twitter they can follow us at gaming wt bros we're you know tweeting stuff all the time doing polls whatnot so uh yeah you can you can check us out there dm us any questions that you want us to answer live on the podcast and if you want to see our tiktok you can go to at gaming with the bros cast <laughs> um we, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll probably post just whatever on there, clips yeah. from the podcast, Halo clips, any other game clips that um, that we're playing. Probably a lot of RCS clips once once that rolls around. So yeah, look forward to that. And uh, we're, we're we're everywhere. Yeah, we're, we're around the place. Yeah, and we got we got a backlog. Email, we got 107 episodes of a backlog that you guys can go check out. Um, we a bunch of bunch of spoiler casts. Uh, we recently did Halo, so if you're interested in that, if you finish that now, go go yeah. listen to that. Uh, we just got done recording our Game of the Year stuff, so go back and check that out and see. Let us know if you agree or not with our with our Game of the Year. Um, so yeah, and and if you have any questions, if you want us to talk about anything, because we don't get a lot of submissions here, so if you, if you have anything you want us to talk about, just email us at gaming with the bros at yahoo.com or tweet at us, DM us. Message us on TikTok. 
whatever, yeah. whatever you want. We'll be yeah, there. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got you. <laughs> All right, guys. We will see y'all next week. Bye-bye.